this section we're going to talk about an attack called Kerberoasting. So Kerberoast is an attack against the Kerberos authentication protocol. We can do this with any low privilege user in the domain, it doesn't have to be an admin. And the result is we get something that we can crack offline to get the original password. It's used against users in a domain that have a service principal name or an SPN. And this is because of how Kerberos works. I won't get into too much detail, but I'll post a link in the description below uh, if you're interested in why this attack works in the first place. But now we're going to use Impacket again, specifically the uh, get user SPN module to uh, get all of the users in a domain that have an SPN attached to them. We're going to specify the IP address of the domain controller here and we're going to say connect to the domain controller with this user, Wendy. Again, we need this, um, we need any privileged user to get an SPN. So Wendy's not an admin, but we have a password and here we go. We found one user in the domain that has an SPN attached. It has permissions for the HTTP protocol on WEF. Its name is logadmin, and it's actually part of the domain admins. So if we do manage to crack this, this hash, it's going to be very good for us. All right, so let's copy this hash. We are going to add it into this file. And now we're going to use hashcat to try and crack it. Here what we're saying is we're going to use attack mode 0, which is just a straight brute force attack. The mode is 13100, which uh, tells Hashcat to attack the Kerberos style hash, which is the one above. Uh, o is for optimization, the file with the hash, and then the word list. So I want to start this. I'm going to let it run. It's going to take a little bit, and I'll come back once it's finished. Okay. That's now done. We can see we've cracked our password. Password is a logger, very inventive. And it did take a while. Uh, this is by no means the fastest cracking machine. We're just using the CPU here. But um, yeah, you can see it took just under 40 seconds to get that password out. What does that mean? Well, now we have a password for a domain admin. We can try to use secret stump with the newly cracked user, newly cracked password against WEF to dump the secrets of that server. You could only do this if this was uh, an admin. So of course this isn't really what you want in your Active Directory environment. In the next section we're going to talk about how to partially remediate this vulnerability. Now let's talk about how to partially remediate the Kerber roasting vulnerability. I say partially because there's no complete way to stop it from happening. It's just part of the Kerberos protocol, but we can put in some protections and configurations in place to make it extremely unlikely for this attack to succeed. Effectively, we're trying to make it so that the attacker is not able to crack the hash that they receive. The first thing is obviously make sure any service account that you're using has a strong password. I recommend using a password of 28 characters or more. And if they're randomly generated passwords that are stored in a password vault, that's even better. That's going to make it very hard to crack in the first place. The second mitigation we're going to do is to enforce that the ticket that we receive is encrypted using AES-128 or higher. This is going to make the cracking process much slower. So the attacker is much less likely to get the password in the time that they want. So first of all, let's remote desktop into our domain controller. And again, I'm going to use the group policy method to fix this vulnerability. We only want to apply this to the domain controllers because that's what the attack is against. And I'm going to call this anti-kerberoast. 
Uh, while we're here, we're going to make sure this is set to enforced. This just tells the domain controller that this is an important policy and that it shouldn't be overwritten even by other policies that supersede it. Okay. Here we go to computer configuration, policies, window settings, security settings, local policies and security options. Okay. Then we go to configure encryption types allowed for Kerberos. Define and we're going to tick these three, AS128, AS256 and future encryption types. Now before you apply this policy, I do want to say that in very rare cases, this is known to break trust relationships between your domain controllers and your member servers. It's quite rare, but I have seen it happen in the past. So please test this against servers that you don't mind rolling back before you apply it to your entire network. We're going to hit OK and that policy will get applied. We're going to right click, group policy update. It's going to update one computer, that's fine. This is just to force this new policy to be sent to all domain controllers, but we only have one. Okay, now performing the Kerberos attack again. We still get the hash, but we can see this important bit here, this 18. Before when we did it the first time, that was 23. And 23 is an E-type or encryption type for RC4. RC4 is an old and broken encryption standard. It's fairly easy to crack nowadays. 18, in this case, stands for AES-256, which is a modern strong encryption standard, much more difficult to crack. So if we try and perform a password cracking attempt again, this time with the new hash, we can see it's going to be much slower. I'll let this load and we'll check on how fast this cracks in just a second. So now we're down to 379 hashes per second. That is significantly slower. I'll let this run for a little bit and come back in about a couple of minutes to see where we're at with the cracking process. Okay, I've come back just before the two minute mark on the cracking process and still we're not even close to being completed. Um, we're not even 1% through this word list actually and this word list is not even that big. Remember, we cracked the previous password in 40 seconds. We've just ticked over two minutes and we've only reached 1% completion on this word list. So if the service account is using a complex password and you're using this encryption standard, AES-256 on your SPNs, there's a very, very low chance that an attacker is going to get the password. So Good luck and I'll see you in the next section.